Hello everybody, it is I, Big Al, once again, let's get down to business. This is going to be a uh, video response to Anita Sarkeesian's <clears throat> what is it? Tropes vs. Women in Video Games Part 1. Now keep in mind, this is only Part 1 of a series, and I'm not going to go through the entire video, uh, because she mentions a couple of things that I'm on, I, I'm, honest, <clears throat> I'm honestly not too informed about, because I don't play m some of the games that she mentions, but I will be mentioning three main points, and that is uh, Popeye, uh, <laughs> Princess Peach, and Zelda. And I also want to make the point that I do agree with her that there is a trope of damsels in distress, and I do believe that feminism should be fought for. I believe that feminism should be a thing that's taken seriously. Unfortunately, people like Anita Sarkeesian make it hard to take it make it very hard to take it seriously especially when she mentioned that she's all in favor of gender segregated trains to prevent and even eradicate sexual harassment on trains but that implies that if a woman gets on a train filled with men she's asking to be raped or molested and I'm pretty sure that goes against the very fabric of feminism that and I have two main my I have two main beefs with her regarding her little kickstarter pro, uh, kickstarter project one she claims to be against the trope of the damsel in distress, yet she made herself a damsel in distress when she got a flood of hate comments for even mentioning that she was doing this project. Now, I don't I don't condone the hate comments, I don't condone the 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 rape threats or the sandwich jokes, but at the same time she was taken advantage of it by saying, Oh, look at all these mean people, look at all these hater comments, I'm being oppressed and people just started throwing money at her. And she has the audacity to go in a press conference and show a picture of the finished Kickstarter with uh, close to $160,000 and say, Oh, look, look, I beat the haters. Look, I got all this money. And I also don't like how she censors her, co or, I'm sorry, not censors, disables her comments and ratings on her video on YouTube. I mean, she she's well within her right to do that. I just don't think it's, I honestly don't think it's right, considering that she posts a video on YouTube, and it's only fair to have both opposing and approving uh, opinions on her site. And, of course, you can say, well, you can comment everywhere else. You can talk about it on Tumblr, you can talk about it on Facebook, but what's the point? If you're going to post it on YouTube, then allow people to talk about it on YouTube. What's the point of having, what's the point of uploading a video you know it's going to be controversial and you know people won't like if you're going to disable the fucking comments? To be completely honest, the video is well made. And it's very well put together, but it look, but for $160,000, it looks very much, if not identical, to all of her other movies that, or all of her other videos that she made for free. So it makes me wonder why she needed the money in the first place. That, and I think she has a very Wikipedia-based amount of knowledge about her, because she gets a few, th she gets a, a, she gets quite a bit. <clears throat> I can't even fucking talk. She gets quite a few things wrong when it comes to the major franchises of Nintendo. And, I'm sorry, you can surround yourself with as many video games as you want, it doesn't make you an expert. An another thing that that kind of irritates me a bit is it's called um, Tropes Against Women in Video Games, but she spends at least a quarter of the video talking about the damsels in distress in silent movies and films in the 30s. I guess that's, you know, to I guess he, she does that to lead up to the video games where this trope is prominent, but if it's about video games, why waste our time with silent movies? Speaking of which, that brings me to my first point with Popeye. Now, obviously, um, olive oil is constantly captured in Popeye, but if she watched the series, she would know that later on in the series, especially during the Rosie the Riveter era, she would know that Pop, uh, that olive oil has at least a few times been able to take care of herself. There's one, there is one uh, episode in particular that I remember where Popeye gets kidnapped by a big, brutish, hulking hillbilly woman, and and olive oil eats the spinach and launches her in, and you know punches her into space. And she's the one that, and Olive's the one that carries Popeye home while singing the theme song. And she also was able to uh, hold her own against Sea Hag too. And speaking of Sea Hag, 
she's the one villain that Popeye cannot beat with brute strength. You want to know, because he literally can't. It's against his code of honor to hit a woman. And I don't know why that's sexist. Like, I don't think Popeye the cartoon itself is sexist. I mean, you can argue that Bluto or Brutus, whoever you prefer, is sexist. Absolutely. Because he's always trying to get into olive oil's pants. But Popeye? I don't think so. Now, as for Princess Peach, yes, she does get kid kidnapped a lot. But one one major point that I wanted to talk about was when uh, Feminist Frequency said that other than Super Mario Brothers 2, where Princess Peach is... Um, made available as a character, which she claims is done by complete accident. Where she gets this, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> but, she claims, other than Mario 2, our, our Super Mario Brothers 2, Peach hasn't been a playable character in any Mario game. Oh, and those side games, the kart racers, the sports games, and Brawl, they don't exist. They, uh, they don't count. Why? Because she said so. And I know why she mentions those games. Because if she didn't, she would have a flood of comments that said she allowed them. She would have a flood of comments of people saying, well, wait a minute, Princess Peach is playable in all these games. Which would completely derail her argument of her never being a playable character. But let's ignore those, let's ignore those games. Let's talk about the main franchise. She says that Princess Peach has never been a playable character in any other Mario game besides... Uh, any other main Mario game besides Super Mario Brothers 2. And then, immediately after she says that, she shows a pic she shows a sprite of Peach crying from Super Princess Peach. I think the fact that Peach has her own game completely derails her argument. And I know that the whole gimmick of the game is that Peach is using her emotions as weapons, you know, crying, getting pissed off, and whatnot, which can be considered very sexist. But... It still doesn't get rid of the fact that Peach has her own game, and she's rescuing Mario. And even if you ignore that, we also still have the Paper Mario series, where in one of them, you get to control Peach, who's just been kidnapped, and rather than wait for Mario to, re to get off his fat ass and rescue her, she actually tries to escape herself. And in Super Paper Mario, she's a playable character. And in Super Mario RPG, Leving of the Le Legend of the Seven Stars, which where she does get kidnapped at first, but when you meet up with her later, she becomes a member of your party and, be and is one of your most valuable party members. And finally, with Princess Zelda being a, da a damsel in distress, she can't, like, like... Anita kind of contradicts herself here because she says that Zelda is a damsel in distress, but oh, she's also very important to Link's quest and helps him along his journey and does all these fucking badass magic tricks, but she's still a damsel in distress. Why? I thought the I thought the term damsel in distress implies that the woman's helpless, that they're all just always constantly getting kidnapped and can't help themselves. And yet Whenever Zel like towards the end of most Zelda games, Zelda's right there, using her magic to help her out, help you out. And one more thing about Zelda that I have I have to I have to point this out. Anita once again says, "Well, there's never been a Zelda game. Well, there's never been a Zelda game where Zelda has been the playable character." And I hate them. I hate to say this, folks. I don't care if they're festering piles of shit. Zelda's Adventure and Wand of Gamelon do exist. Just because they're absolutely god-awful doesn't make them any less relevant to her argument. And do you know what you do in those games? You save Link, and you save the kingdom as Zelda, the person in the title. And finally, the, 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 the final thing I want to talk about is where she says at the end, Oh, but I'm a gamer. You know, oh, but I love these games. Uh, you know, I, they're, they, I, I cherish them. They're part of my childhood. You just spent 20 minutes talking shit about Mario and Zelda and even came this close to calling Shigeru Miyamoto a sexist, misogynistic piece of shit. And then you're going to turn around and say, Oh, but I love these games. I love them. I can't relentlessly talk crap about Sandra Lee and say, Oh, her food sucks, her cooking sucks, I fucking hate her. She's one of the worst, she's one of the worst cooks of my generation. And turn around and say, Oh, but I love her show. And I find it pretty funny that she has a picture of Zelda and Princess Peach in their respective heroes' outfits when she wrote a when she wrote an essay that's completely against that type of shit of the female filling the male role. But whatever, that's really all I have to say about her video. It's well put together, but she but her arguments are flawed. 
I can see where she's coming from most of the time, but overall, I'll just I I guess I'll just have to wait for the rest of the series. I re I don't think I have any plans of going over the rest of her videos. Though it's just there are some things in her video that just really bothered me, and those are the ones that I want. Those are the points that I wanted to bring up. I'm not mad at her because she's a feminist. I don't think that she, but I definitely don't think she speaks for all feminists or all women, for that matter, because there are plenty of women who are making rebuttals to her video. So, I mean, I have a couple of friends who are women who fucking hate her. So, <laughs> she definitely doesn't speak for all women. She speaks for herself. She speaks for herself because there are things that offend her, and she wants to make it like sound like they are offensive to everybody. But whatever. That's that's all I got to say about uh, Nina Sarkeesian. I'm actually looking forward to the rest of her videos. I really want to see what she says about Metroid Other M, because I think that character-wise, they just completely destroyed Samus Aran. That's what I truly believe. Well, folks, thank you for watching. Till then, this has been Big Al, over and out.